Yo, what is going on guys? JD Yumiko here, and today we're back with some more Kato wa Shoujo. Last time we left off, we had a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with Hanako, and I feel as if the story is starting to reach its climax here. I believe there should be maybe one or two more chapters that we have left for her route, but without further ado, let's load right on back in. Shady Encounter, I believe that's where we left off. Hopefully that is the right save. Yes, it is. Okay. <clears throat> the summertime sun is to be is something to be savored, but when combined with the clean country air, it's all the better. Bing bong. Okay. The track and field members are horsing around on the field ahead. Some are playing with a soccer ball, others are talking, and a few laugh as two of them mock fight with each other. None of them pay me any heed as I sit alone on the grass underneath the shade of a particularly large tree. It's a nice and peaceful moment after a dreary day of schoolwork. I played soccer pretty often before my heart attack, so I thought it would be really nostalgic to watch them. What I'm feeling now, though, is quite distinct from that emotion. I hear footsteps approaching me from behind, and I turn to my side to see one of my classmates taking a seat beside me. I'm taken off guard as the two of us haven't talked much before, and I didn't think anyone would notice me there. New character? Okay. Sup? Hi, Muta, wasn't it? Just call me Mickey. Sometimes I too stiffy. Likewise, then. We both look back out at the field where the guys were playing. It looks like they're getting ready to have a second game, with people spreading out to their positions and the ball being carried to the center of the field. Sure enough, the whistle is blown to begin the match and they get right back to it. Not gonna play? Nah, I'm just resting for a bit. What about you? You kind of look like you wanted to jump in when you were watching us before. So, someone did notice me after all. It's kind of a long story. Her face says that I've piqued her interest. I'm in Yamaku because I've got a heart condition. I can't really play soccer anymore. You wanted to be a soccer player, did you? No, I only really did it for fun. My friends played it, so I played it as well. Any of those guys playing around could have been me before my accident, but I don't really feel like I have any wish to go back to that either. It's a little hard to explain. I'm still decently physically built from the days when I played, even if my strengths largely left me by now, and I got on well with the other club members. When I think about it, I should feel pretty bad watching people play when I can't anymore, yet I don't. Maybe it's a good thing, a sign that I've gotten over it and that I'm ready to become a new person. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling. It's cool. I'm actually glad to hear that. It sounds like you really have your stuff together. Some of the people that come to Yamaku are pretty messed up at first. So you're a member of the track and field club then? Yep, been in it since I first arrived. Don't suppose you're friends with Emmy? Short, fast runner, no legs? I don't think there are all that many female track and field members. <laughs> Emmy, everyone knows about her, don't they? But nah, I tend to get on better with guys, so me and Emmy don't really talk much. Anyway, what about you? Ah, uh, well, I'm not, in, I'm not really in any clubs. Well, real clubs, anyway. You've been hanging around with Hanako and that blonde Amazon, though, right? Blonde Amazon. I suppose Lily has the height to fit that description, if nothing else. I nod and respond without making too fine a point of things. Then don't worry about it. As long as you've got some friends, you don't need to join a club. A loud whistling from the field attracts our attention. One of the players is on the ground, clutching his leg, and the other players stop to jog up to him, leaving Mickey grimacing. Ouch, that looks painful. That guy really has bad luck. As she continues to look out onto the field, I can't help but I can't help being reminded of her own injuries. Her left arm, ending in a stump rather than a hand, has been bandaged up for the entire time I've been in Yamaku, and her injury doesn't seem that new. She turns to talk to me again and catches me looking. Both of us sit in awkward silence as she takes her bandage armed, her bandaged arm and holds it in her lap with the other remaining hand. S sorry, I guess I'm still a bit. It's fine. Really? Her tone is light, but neither of us says anything afterwards. Every disabled student has every disabled student here has their own way of dealing with their problems, and some finding their condition troublesome is only natural. I'm included among them after all. 
The injured guy from the soccer game manages to get onto his feet with some help and ends up hobbling off the field with one arm over the shoulder of another for support. Probably just pulled a muscle if he could still manage to walk. The whistle blows again and the game continues once more with one less man on the field. Hanging out with Hanako and that blonde girl. You, you keep some pretty strange company. How so? It's just that Hanako's kind of... I don't know. Shy? Nah, it's not really that. It's just... She's got some issues, I think. I can't really put it in a nice way. Not that I don't think she's a nice person, though. She's perfectly nice. Just hard to deal with. It sounds like Miki, or at least some other people in the class, have tried to get closer to Hanako in the past, and that it didn't go well. I think her judgement is rather harsh, given that everyone, not just those in Yamaku, have their own issues. Then again, I haven't known Hanako for that long, so it wouldn't surprise me if there was some stuff I didn't know about. I'll just take it as it comes. She's a nice person, and I think that should be all that matters. Miki's eyes narrow a little, and her smile spreads. You really like her, don't you? Miki certainly doesn't mince words. We're going to admit it. That should be the correct response there. So yeah, let's uh, let's save just in case, because you really never know with these things. All right, we're gonna continue return. All right, let's see here. So we're gonna admit it. To be honest. Yeah, I do. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell anyone, though. Hey, whoa, you can trust me. No problem there. To be honest, I think it's kind of cute. If you want to go for it, don't let me don't let me stop you. Thanks. She may say that, but she was just talking about Hanako having issues. Still, I have I want to hold myself to the words I said. Hanako's problems don't matter. I'll deal with anything that comes up because I want to help her. If there's even the smallest possibility that I can pull Hanako out of her depression and seclusion, then I should work towards that, no matter what. If she needs a prince, then I'll be that prince. That was... I'm not gonna lie, that was, that was a little bit corny. As I think about the possibility of a relationship, I can see Miki grinning at me while watching my face. I'm no doubt blushing, and looking away from her only makes her laugh. Miki gives off a different vibe from the other girls. Talking to her feels more like a... Ugh. Talking to her feels more like talking to a guy than a woman. Her saying she prefers male company doesn't help to dispel that notion either. Glancing at my watch shows that lunch break is ending in only a few minutes. Time to start heading back to class. Lunch break is about to end. Wanna head back? Yeah, we better. I pick myself up off the grass and dust myself off, offering a hand to Miki to help her up as well. She takes it and easily pulls herself up showing the muscles moving in her toned bare arms in the process. Come to think of it, why aren't you wearing the normal girl's blouse? Eh, it's too hot and constric constricting. The boy's uniform is better anyway. She throws her arm around a bit to emphasize her point, which has a side effect of showing off one particular part of her body that would be especially constricted by the blouse. <laughs> the two of us start the walk back to the main building through the gardens, talking as we go. It sounds like you're settling in well. That's a relief. It was pretty surprising to get a transfer student at this point in the year, considering the exams are coming up. Don't remind me. <laughs> Don't worry about them. Just cram it and you'll be fine. That doesn't sound like good advice. She claps my shoulders a couple of times as she grins. I don't think she takes school very seriously. You seem like a smart guy, and Muto is taking to you all and Muto is taking to you well already. You're like a hand in a glove. Now how, now how to work out now to work out whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I still don't know what to make of this school. I've only been here a few weeks already, but I still feel dazed at times. You'll get used to it. Just give it some time. It's only a high school, just like any other. She makes it sound so simple, but I've never thought about it that way. To me, Yamaku symbolized a marked shift in my life. I was no longer normal. I was different, and was to be educated with other different people. And yet I'm walking back to class and talking casually with a classmate during lunch after watching some others play a soccer game. All perfectly normal. Maybe she has a point. Maybe I should just look at Hanako in the same way. Everyone has their own issues. This is hardly something unique to Yamaku. After all, it's only a high school, just like any other. As we continue to walk, I find myself smiling. 
Miki and I are very different people in almost every way, but it feels good to have gotten to know another classmate a bit better. Alright, nice. Boom, baby. Now personally, I'm more into the I'm more into the tan girls, you know, that's that's my thing. Uh, <laughs> a light breeze blows through the scent of blows the scent of early summer around my head while I wait for Lily. Small white clouds litter the sky, breaking up the monotony of the blue. Monotony. Hey Sal, are you there? Lily's voice lilts the breeze as if they were Oh shish, this is this is some complexionary vocabulary. <laughs> Lily's voice lilts on the breeze as if they were one and the same thing. I stop gazing into the sky to examine Lily. With a peach off-the-shoulder sweater and the tan ankle-length skirt, in addition to tan sandals, she's quite a nice sight. Yeah, I'm over here, Lily, near the gate. Were you able to sneak away from Hanako? Yes, it's not common for me to go out during weekends. <clears throat> during weekends, so I don't think she noticed anything suspicious. That and... She has someone she sees. Lily purses her lips as if maybe she shouldn't have continued. I find it a little hard to believe. Hanako seen someone? Really? No, it's just she sees a therapist every so often on weekends. Oh, well, that does make a lot of sense. Lily rubs her arm uncomfortably, and after one look at her troubled expression, I quickly move to change the topic away from Hanako. Huh. Yes? I was just wondering, you can get around the city on your own? Lily sighs at my consternation surrounding the topic of her blindness. I'm my own worst enemy sometimes. I can, yes. It's easier when I'm out with a friend or my sister, though. I wonder how Lily gets along with her sister. Being an only child, it's hard to imagine what having a sibling would be like, so it makes me a little envious of her. Right. Well then, the bus arrives in a few minutes, so we should probably get a move on. Indeed. It's a long wait if we miss the one. If we miss this one. With that, we set off for the bus stop on the hill. It's only a small distance from the school gate, so it's very convenient. It's a nice view from here. Coming from the city, I never really got to see scenery like this, let alone on a daily basis. This area is nice for me as well. It's tranquil and away from the noises and smells of the city. Lily's head perks up in a trademark gesture of hers, signifying that she's caught a sound. Oh, here comes the bus. I look down the road to see the bus trundling up the hill. Her hearing's quite a useful tool. The bus only takes a short while to reach the bus stop, forcing its way up the road, and within a few minutes, we're on our way to the city. Walking around the city, I feel a distinct nostalgia. The smells, the traffic, the tall buildings everywhere. It's a lot like my native city, save for the raised walkways. It feels a little weird, walking around a city as casually as I would in a park, but with cars rushing ar around underneath me. As I'm busily pondering the engineering marvel that is the raised sidewalk, I get a surprise. It takes a moment for me to realize that Lily has wrapped her arm around mine, extending her cane in front of her with her other hand. For a moment I'm startled, but I manage to keep enough of a lid on it for Lily not to notice. While it's not the first time that Lily's relied on me for guidance, she'd only held onto my sleeve cuffs before. Let me turn down. That is just very, very loud. It's nostalgic. Ugh, nostalgic. It's logical that it would be easier for her to navigate a crowded and complex area such as the city while securely linked, but I'm far from being as used to this kind of thing, this kind of contact as Lily is. Finally, realizing the growing silence between us as Lily waits for me to get moving, I quickly kick my brain into gear. You know, it was quite a- <clears throat> What was that? You know, it was quite a surpri- Like, what the hell? You know, it was quite a surprise that Hanukkah likes to sing. Have you ever heard her do that before? I have indeed. We've been to karaoke sessions several times, along with my sister. I can't say that I take the activity too much, but the other two like it. Maybe Hanako doing karaoke is more fitting than I initially thought. Just her and those she knows, those she knows, all alone in a little room. It would give her a rare chance to let her guard down, with nobody else there to judge her. Maybe it would be nice to bring her into town for a karaoke birthday party, if she likes doing it. Hmm, I'm not sure she would deal very well with the excitement. 
I move to protest, but her face shows that she's mulling the proposal over, so over some more. It takes quite some time for her to come to a conclusion. Then again, the best thing we can do for Hanako at this point is to try to create some pleasant birthday memories. Continually treating her as if she's abnormal won't help. I think you're right. If she has something to remember apart from loss, then maybe she'll come around. If we bought her something nice that she could see every day, then maybe she'd be able to take her mind off her past and remember that she has friends. In any case, I think Hanako can handle something like this. In the time I've spent beside her, I've learned that she isn't quite as frightfully, fra frightfully fragile as I first thought she was. So, shall we be off? I'm not really sure about the layout of this area. Very well. I might like to suggest having something to eat first. I haven't either, so that sounds like a so that sounds like a good plan. Make sure you choose a nice place, Isao. She gives a teasing smile, one that makes me smile reflexively in response, even if she can't see that. I'll make sure I'll make very sure I do. Don't worry about that. Once inside, I order two slices of pie and accompanying cups of tea and take them back to our table. I'd pegged this cafe as a type to appeal to Lily, small and quiet, but well kept and somewhat upscale. Going by the dainty smile she wears, I don't really know if I chose right. It's very, very rare to not see her smiling after all. Nevertheless, I take a seat near her at one of the corner tables and lay down our small meals. Lily gingerly brings her hand over the slice of pie placed in front of her, delicately taking in the aroma. Lemon pie, is it? Thank you, Isao. No problem. The tea's just next to it, so be careful not to knock it over. She nods appreciatively, but judging from the slightly weak smile she has, the warning wasn't really necessary. I suppose this I suppose the sound must have tipped her off to its position. We both tuck into our food without further ado, both of us remaining largely silent as we do so. Lily isn't the type to appreciate discussion while eating, and I can't say I like it either. Eventually we finish both of our meals and the last of our teacups follows in short order. Lily's the first to break the silence. That was very nice. I must say you've chosen quite well, Hisao. This isn't the first time I've had that this is the first time I've had that much of a look around the city, so all I could really do is choose somewhere that looked nice. Uh damn, sorry. I feel really bad for inadvertently bringing up the subject of sight around Lily, but she doesn't appear to mind much. Quite the opposite, she almost looks amused by my awkward attempt at an apology. You are thoughtful, Hisao, but sometimes I fear that it gets the better of you. There's no need to change your speech on my account. Lily truly is pretty comfortable in dealing with her condition. I still hasten to change the subject, as I can't really say I share her confidence in the matter. Have you lived around here for long? It seems like you know this place pretty much sorted out. It seems like you have this place pretty much sorted out. God, I keep messing up, man. I cannot read today, as seems to be the case with most days. She quickly waves her hand in front of her face to dismiss dismiss the notion. It's nothing like that. I've attended Yamaku since the start of high school, but I didn't walk around the city very much because Akira, my sister, picked me up and dropped me off. Oh, right. You mentioned not living in the dormitories until recently. It's quite a surprise. I just assumed, she I just assumed she'd been living there since entering Yamaku at the least, which would give her a few years here. I've lived with my family for most of my life. Then I was just together with my sister with my family having moved to Inverness long before, and Akira working longer hours, I ended up having to move. Inverness? Isn't that somewhere in Scotland? Oh, did I not tell you? My family currently lives in Scotland, the birthplace of my mother. My father's side is mainly Japanese, though. Huh. The question of what gave Lily her looks did cross my mind every now and then, but I never thought to ask. That answers that, then. To be honest, I'd never have guessed. Considering you have no accent, I'm guessing you were born here? Full marks. I am thankful for my heritage, though. As without it, I'd likely have not been taught English so early in my life. And what of you, Hisao? What about me? She gives a moment's thought. She probably should have thought of what to ask me before switching the topic. I'll go with... What are your plans for the future? To be honest, I haven't really thought about that much recently. After my accident and subsequent months in the hospital, enjoying my life here with you and Hanako has been enough for me. In fact, I don't think I've thought all, at all about a future for some time now. It seems almost futile. This is your last year of school. After this, you'll have to fend for yourself one way or the other. 
It's not like I don't know that. I just haven't put much thought into it since then. She opens her mouth to continue, but gives a small sigh instead. She seems to have realized that she really doesn't know enough about my situation to go too deeply into this. Well, we all have our own pace. I just hope you'll take any chance you see. I understand. I'll think about it. As we walk back into the city, Lily takes hold of my arm once again. So, did you get any good ideas for a present? To be honest, no. I've never really been good at picking them. As absurd as it sounds, perhaps we should just look around? Hearing Lily utter those words throws me, off, throws me for a moment. Uh, right. How do we do that? That's just the reaction I was expecting. It's simple. You can go window shopping and just tell me what's around. If something interesting comes up, then we might get an idea. Right. I'm still not so sure of this, but I'll take your word for it. I think we'll manage. Hanako, my sister and I, managed to do it well enough. With Lily's simplistic and rather optimistic statement, we set off into the shopping district of the city, and I start describing everything I see to Lily. It's hard to think of Hanako going window shopping. She doesn't really feel like the type to place much stock in fashion, nor have I noticed her reading magazines or the like. In fact, all I think I've really seen her do as a hobby is read books. There's a warehouse shop just ahead. Oh, warehouse. <laughs> a warehouse shop, huh? Okay. <laughs> There's a housewares shop just ahead. Looks like it's mostly crockery, though. I can't think that she'd have much of a need for that. And what type of message would that send to her? Um, cook more food? That's not such a bad idea. Maybe. Sometimes it's best to leave things alone, Hisao. Once again, I get the feeling that Hanako's exploits in the kitchen aren't always successful. Lily must have had to help her with that sometimes. Let's see, next along is a bookshop. That seems like a good one. She's always reading. Yes, but there are a few problems with books. I'm not quite sure what she has and hasn't read. What about a gift card, then? There's nothing as impersonal as giving someone a gift card. It's like saying I don't know enough about you to work out what you'd like. I always thought of it as making sure they got what they wanted. Giving people gifts is supposed to show them the level of affection you have for them. If you can't decide on a simple gift for them, then how much could you think then how much could you think of them? Right, right, no gift cards. Lily seems overly passionate about this, but I can see her point. If you're gonna do something for someone, then you should at least put some thought into it. If I want to get something for Hanako that reminds her of us every day, then what good is a gift card? In that case, what did you get Hanako last year? A porcelain doll. I thought that if she had someone to talk to, it might help her ease her pain. A doll isn't ever going to criticize her, after all. So should I be looking for a doll shop? If you could be so kind to keep a lookout for one, I would be grateful. Sounds good to me, though I wish you'd mentioned it earlier. But if I did that, then you wouldn't have started thinking for yourself, would you? Once again, Lily has a point. My brain is currently analyzing every store we pass for gift options. If Lily had mentioned a doll shop to begin with, I wouldn't have thought of anything else. We, we, all, we wander through the city streets, but seem unable to find anything that resembles a doll shop, or anything that I could consider a fitting present. The simple act of searching is starting to clear my head. The events of last week are starting to fade away, and I'm looking forward to giving Hanako her gift. If I can find one, that is. Ugh, this is hopeless. I thought we'd be able to find something in the city for sure, and I'm sure we walked down this street at least once before. That almost sounds like you're giving up, Isao. I'm not, but it's just a lot harder than I thought. Try not to be so restricted on your thinking. Maybe we should actually go into some shops and have a look around. That might work. <clears throat> that might work. I've never really been any good at window shopping. Lily and I circle around the city streets once more, this time popping into stores that catch our attention. In the end, though, nothing comes up as especially appropriate. Hanako's tastes are often quite hard to pin down at the best of times, thanks to her intensely private nature, and those tastes we do know are hard to accommodate. May we take a break for a minute? I'm a bit exhausted. I agree and leave Lily to rest against the railing while I go get a couple of drinks from a nearby vending machine. After walking up to the vending machine and grabbing myself some lemonade, I find myself at a bit of a loss. Not really knowing Lily's tastes, I decide to get it I decide to guess and grab something that seems a little girly, but not too weird. Strawberry flavored milk. 
back. I walk up to her and place the carton into her outstretched hands, making sure she has a grip on it before letting go. She feels out its contours before opening it and taking a very tentative sip. Her approving smile afterwards tells me that I made the right choice. We both rest and have a quiet drink for a few minutes. A familiar soft ringing begins to sound from Lily's side. She quickly apologizes as her hand goes into her pocket, pulling out her mobile phone. Do you mind if I take this? It's fine, don't worry. She nods to me and thanks before turning away and flipping the phone open, bringing it to the side of her face as she picks up the call. Going by the tone of Lily's voice, the person on the other end is no doubt some friend or another. I tune out of their conversation pretty quickly, as the snippets that Lily says make it sound like a little more than gossip. Without much else to do, I find myself watching Lily. She really is a pretty girl, which would hardly hurt her popularity in school. It's interesting just how much Hanako and Lily contrast each other, in both personality and appearance. For a few minutes, I just lean back and drink, watching her. Before long, Lily says her goodbyes to the person she's talking to and hangs up, placing her phone back in her pocket and leaning back against the railing as before. Sorry, just a friend from a class. I take one final swig from my can before throwing it into the bin. Lily gives me her carton to throw away soon after, finishing it off relatively quickly. You seem to have a lot of good friends. A lot of friends. Oh? Lily waits for me to continue, her interest piqued. I was just thinking that you and Hanako contrast really heavily. It's hard to imagine Hanako doing a lot of the things you do, or knowing the people you know. You seem to think about Hanako quite a bit. I don't know. It's just... She's mysterious, I guess. I kind of want to know more about her, which isn't that easy. It almost sounds like you're doubting your relationship to her. I don't think it's that. I just want to do more for her. Being her friend and all. I don't even really know how she sees me. This statement seems to interest Lily quite a bit. I wonder if Hanako said anything about me to Lily during their conversations. I'm about to ask what's on her mind as she picks herself up from the railing. Shall we be off then? Her voice and expression show that she's playing games with me. Lily knows damn well that she's leaving me hanging. With a sigh, I pick myself up off the railing as well and have a brief look around. We have stuff to do, so I'll just try and get back to her about this later. Tucked in between a newsstand and a convenience store is a small shop. The sign above the door reads Othello's Antiques, in decorative English script. It would be easy to miss if you were walking along the street, but since we're stationary and I'm purposefully looking around, it's just noticeable. Say, Lily, that doll you got Hanako, was it new? Well, yes, but I'm not quite sure I know what you mean. I think I found our shop. It's across the road. Oh, what is it? Some kind of toy shop? It's an antique shop. I think it's probably going to be our best bet. Really? I didn't even know we had one of those near here. Neither did I. I missed it the first time we went by here. It's pretty well hidden. Well then, it can't hurt to check. Inspired by this new find, we quickly dust ourselves off and head towards the store, Lily's hand finding its way to my elbow for guidance. The store has a strange, musky scent to it. The layout is more like a garage than a store. Things are strewn around the floor without any immediate semblance of order. The shopkeeper gives us an almost bored look through, though his particularly... Oh, through. It says though, but it's supposed to say through. His particularly small eyes. His face looks weary and tired, and his dress style is distinctly anar anachronistic. He gives us a polite nod of welcome before going back to his book. Lily holds tightly onto my arm, and I find myself having to split my efforts between making sure we don't miss a potential gift for Hanako, and making sure that Lily doesn't inadvertently bump into anything. The task is quite difficult given the haphazard way the store is laid out, and the many things poking out of the shelves that are on or sitting on pieces of furniture, but eventually we safely arrive at an old desk covered in dolls and teddy bears. I think this is the right place. There's pretty much every kind of doll you can imagine here. That would make the choice much simpler. <clears throat> that would make the choice much simpler. Could you please pick one for me, Hisao? I had a feeling that it would come to this. I picture Hanako in my mind, and try to imagine which of the dolls before me would suit her best. My eyes wander across the collection. Each one is as exquisite as the one before it. The sheer number of styles is boggling, but eventually, one catches my eye. Here, what about this one? 
I pick up a small porcelain doll that looks to be at least somewhat affordable. Dressed in a Victorian era green dress with a little brown hat sitting atop its blonde hair. It looks a little like Lily. I gently pass it to her, who delicately feels her way around the object while wearing a slight look of concentration. It certainly feels beautiful. Do you think it would suit Hanako in your opinion? I think it would. It could look good in a room. In that case, I'll trust your judgment. We'll be getting her something as will you be getting her something as well? Or shall this be a shared gift? Hmm, I'm not sure. I think I should get her something myself, but I don't think getting her another doll is such a great idea. Maybe... I let my voice trail off as I look around the shop. Resting on a writing table not far off from us as a decorative... Ugh. Resting on a writing table not far off from us is a decorative box that catches my eye. Wait here, I think I found something. My my, that was fast. I gingerly walk through a collection of crystal glassware and pick up the box. The wooden sides are covered in carvings depicting ancient battles around a castle. The top, however, looks far too familiar. Alternating squares of white and black varnished wood are arranged on the lid. That's a really nice item. It's a chess set from overseas. The store owner's sudden appearance startles me a little. I didn't see him approaching at all. I suppose he's trying to help us because we don't really look like we know what we're looking for. Or, on the other hand, maybe he wants to keep an eye on us because he, su because he suspects we might shoplift instead. I'm looking for a present for a friend. I see. In that case, his chest set would make a fine choice. Realization floats into my mind. This is a pretty good looking set, but this is an antique shop. They're not well known for their bargain prices. How old is this? This is a reproduction. My best estimate is that it's about five years old. I see. How much? He thinks a little before telling me, which is slightly disconcerting. I'll let you take this now for 7,000 yen. I balk a little. I wasn't expecting to spend that much, but this does seem perfect. Then again, maybe that's a that maybe that's a testament to how well we. Blah, blah, blah. I can't read. Then again, maybe that's a testament to how well he worked out how much he can make me pay. Couldn't make it five thousand. Five thousand five hundred. No lower. I'm sold. Oh, we'd also like to get that doll. The store owner looks over my shoulder, focusing on Lily and the doll in her hands. His eyes narrow and he visibly takes a moment to switch mental gears. In the process, his smile drops slightly. Ah. I guess that means that not everything in the store is a reproduction. Are you quite sure that you want that doll, miss? I trust my friend's judgment. I see. Oh, no offense. None taken. If you could please wrap it for me, it would be appreciated. Yes, of course, but it is 20,000 yen. Lily reaches into, her, reaches into her purse and pulls four crisp-looking 5,000 yen notes. Here you are, 20,000 yen. The storekeeper dutifully takes them and the doll and proceeds to the counter. I take Lily's arm to guide her there. Are you sure about this? It's okay. I have the funds I need. As I said, I trust your judgment. I feel a little guilty on two fronts. Firstly, because Lily has just spent a lot of money on my recommendation. And secondly, because I have a feeling the value of my gift isn't high enough. Nevertheless, Lily does seem to get somewhat awkward whenever the mention of money comes about. She's probably like fucking secretly rich as hell. I hand the shopkeeper my present and the money for it in return. He puts the cash into the register before busying himself with wrapping the doll and repeating the process on the chessboard. Eventually, he finishes the gift wrapping and hands us both of our presents. Please be careful on your way back, and do come again. Thanks. Indeed, thank you very much. The store owner bows deeply to us as we leave. Well, it did take us all day, but we found something in the end. That we did. Now that the presents are wrapped, I'm feeling a little impatient to give them, give them to Hanako. It's a common reaction to buying gifts, wanting to see the reaction of the receiver as they discover what it is. And part of me wants to return to Hanako, just to confirm her condition with my own eyes. So, shall we head back? Let's.
We've done a lot of walking today, so I shan't mind taking a rest at the dormitories. Lily's right. Now that, they, now that the need to find a shop is over, my legs are feeling quite tired. Well then, back to school for us. I'm looking forward to resting for a bit too. God, I, I don't know why I sounded so robotic there. Lily holds out her arm and I link mine with hers. Together we make our way back to the bus stop. Alrighty. That is where we are going to end off this episode. Alrighty, let's go ahead and save, create new save, and main menu. Alright, so interesting, interesting stuff. We got Hanako a little gift, a little chessboard, which is a little, uh, I don't know how many times I'm going to say little, but we've got her a chessboard, which is, I guess, kind of a bonding thing with me and her. That's something that we tend to do, tend to do a lot together. Uh, so I'm very, I'm also very interested in seeing how she responds to the gifts and what exactly we're going to do for the birthday as well. You know, we might do some karaoke or it might just be a little get together with just a few of us, right? I'm also interested in Lily's like backstory now. So I definitely uh, am going to be wanting to do her route sometime in the future. But uh, that's going to be it for this time. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video and tell me in the comment section below what you would like to see me play next. If you liked this video, or if you liked any other videos or series on my channel, then I highly recommend that you hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you can be notified when a new one of those videos comes out. Anyways, that's going to be it for me, and I'll see you in the next one.